Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the old, new, the simple and advanced editing options in the Shutterfly Photobook Editor. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a like. Shutterfly has changed some things in their editing process. If you don't know who Shutterfly is, it's a huge photo book making company in America and uh, their editor is very creative, just like Mixbook. You can create from lots of pre-designed book templates and just drag and drop your photos. In the past few months, I received quite a lot of comments and emails regarding the Shutterfly editor. Many of you didn't understand what's happening to the editor. Why has it changed? What happened to the advanced features? Why did they disappear? I thought it's time for me to address all of these in a video. So I delved into the editors, spent a little bit of time in all of them to understand the differences and how to access each editor. I'm going to go into the editors and show you and do a quick walkthrough in each of them. But before that, I just want to say my general opinion about the new and old editor and also just a couple of thoughts on, on which one to choose and is there any point in using any of them over the other. So Shutterfly used to have one online editor which used to have some advanced features. Now you've got two options when you click on a photo book. One says shortcut or easy, uh, fewer options editor and the other one is a manual editor. If you click on the shortcut one, which is the easier one, that's going to be the new editor, which is basically a slightly simplified version of the old editor. And it looks a lot more like an app, more like a phone app or a smartphone app. When you click on the manual editor, the old editor is going to open up the one that you got used to. And within that old editor, you also have an advanced editing feature. And basically that opens up more options. So even within the manual editing options, you've got two editors to work in the, the simple one and the advanced editing options. Now, what you need to understand is if you start a project in the new editor, the shortcut one, you won't be able to access any advanced features, but you do have the chance to turn your simple path photo book project into an old editor project. And then you're going to have access to the advanced editing options. So you can go from the new simple to the old advanced options, but it doesn't work the other way around. So if you have a project in the old editor, which has the advanced features, you won't be able to turn it into a simple path um, photo book project. So I hope that makes sense. Now, when I was looking through all of these these options. What I noticed is that the standard old editor, so the one without the advanced features, is almost completely identical to the new editor, the simplified version, but the tools have been shuffled around. So you see the options in different places in the window. And that can be a little bit confusing because if you got used to having the photos in the bottom and the editing tools on the left side, now the editing tools are going to be in the bottom. And it's just a little bit of a mess when you look at it at the first uh, site. Also, uh, some of the features got taken away from the simplified editor, like adding um, effects to your photos and also browsing templates from the big library. So you've got a lot of templates for the or layouts in the simplified editor, the new one, but you can't have access to all the other layouts from different other pre-made photo books. Whereas in the old editor, you can import layouts from different other photo book templates. And another important thing I noticed is that while in the old editor with the simple uh, features, when I start dragging photos onto an empty page, it starts creating automatic layouts. And this does not happen in the new editor. You basically have to select a layout after you put in your photos but I show you this when I go into the editor. So all in all, um, I would definitely still use the old editor and possibly the simple version of it. But if I do need some advanced features, I can always click on the advanced tab. I don't think that the new editor is giving you any benefits over the old one. The only reason why it could be slightly useful if you've never done a photo book and you want that kind of phone interface on a desktop computer, then you can just drag and drop photos into layouts without editing anything like size or adding text and so on. And you can create photo books very fast. But other than that, if you like editing, you're much better off in the old editor, whether it's the simple path 
or the advanced uh, tab. So let's go into the editors and let's have a quick walkthrough to see where the new tools are in the new editor versus the old editor. So first of all, let's see how we get into the different editors. So when you come to the Shutterfly website and you browse pre-made book templates, I came to travel and I'm going to click on this one here. You select your book size, book cover, uh, book binding pages and so on. And then you go choose this style. And here you have two options, two great ways to create. One is the shortcuts and the other one is the full control one. So let's see first the new editor, the shortcuts one. It's asking you to upload photos, but I've got photos in Shutterfly, so I'm going to use those ones. There we go, and now it's analyzing my photos and I think it's going to create it automatically. Yeah, so now you can see it's created the book automatically. I don't like it at all because look, it's not centered. Um, it's just not the greatest layout, but never mind. So when you start the book and select your photos, the new editor is going to create the book automatically without asking you. And after that, you can come and customize it the way you want to. So now let's have a look at the editor, the interface. It's a lot simpler as you can see and things move. So when I look at this page now here, I almost can't find anything. But what you see is a little edit button here. And when you click on the edit button and come to a page, a double page spread, there we go. Then here you'll see all your options. So in the bottom, you've got your photos and you can hide the used ones. You can add more photos if you click on the plus and you've also got your embellishments. And here are the recently used ones and browse all allows you to get loads and loads of embellishments from different other projects as well. And you've also got your backgrounds. These are again the recently used ones and you can browse and search them. So that's in the bottom here. Now, if you come to the left side where all these used to be, now the only thing you've got is layouts and the layouts are grouped into five categories based on how many photos you've got on them. One, two, three, four and five plus. So if I come to number two, then here are some um, layouts with two photos and some spread layouts as well. You can always see which ones are spreads because um, they appear as two pages and the single pages, the left and right side appear with a little break between them. And that's all the layouts you can get for two photos, which to be honest is more than enough. But in the old editor, you used to be able to browse layouts from different other photo book templates and that has been taken away. Now you can't browse any more templates. So you have to work with the ones here. And in the top section here, you've got all pages, which takes you back to the view where you can see your pages and you can uh, organize them. And you've also got add pages. You've got remove pages, make spread, add text, uh, undo, redo and zoom in, zoom out. And also you've got a reset book option, which is going to get rid of everything that you did. Now on the right side here, you've got some design suggestions, which is basically just a, a random selection of different options you can choose from. Again, this is very app like. And the other thing that is um, difficult to find is the photo book type. There used to be something called here options where you could see the photo book options for the cover paper binding and so on. But now you have to basically click on this here. Here you can see the style, you can see the book size and the book type. And you can choose from these three types and you can choose the binding and the pages and more options, which is the memorabilia pocket logo and six color printing. So these are the upgrades. Now, the one thing you can't change is the size of the book. As you can see here, there's no option to change the size and there's no option to change the book style. So once you settled on these and you started editing your project, you won't be able to change these anymore, which again is something that you can do in the old editor. Now let's see how this works in, in, in practice. So let's come to your page here. I've got one photo. And when I click on this photo, I can change the size of it and I can move it around, which is great. And if I want, I can remove it. I can swap it with another photo by clicking on it and I can also crop it. Now, if I come to the edit button, I can change the crop to position my photo wherever I want to. But as you can see, the editing features disappeared. You can't put effects on or remove a red eye and so on. And finally, we've got frames here. So you can choose from a, a range of frames to put around the photo. 
and you can remove the photo and you can also remove the photo box. Now let's reset the book and start editing from scratch. So let's start by dragging one photo onto the layout, just puts it there. But if I put a second one and a third one and another one, as you can see, the layout is not changing. So it's not creating automatic layouts for me when I add more photos, but this happens in the old editor. So again, that's a feature that they got rid of the auto um, layout creation. So what I have to do now is come to my layouts and pick one with four photos, for example, this one and drag it onto the page and then it puts my photos onto the layout. Also, there is no shuffle button, so I can't change between the layouts just to see which one I like. But instead of the shuffle button, you can see different layouts here with four photos on the right side and you can click on them and preview them how they look. Now, if I want to create a layout to go across two pages, I can either click on this make spread button here which is going to allow me to move photos across the two pages. Also, if you want to create a double page spread, you can click on one of these layouts, which are for um, double page spreads like this one here, and then it automatically makes your spread a double page spread. Now, if you want to add some text, you can do that by clicking on the text button and the text options again are a little bit more app-like, but you still have quite a lot of um, control, font size, vertical, horizontal alignment, font, color, and you can remove it. If you want, you can add uh, embellishments and you can also change the background if you want to by dragging it onto the layout. Now here's this little button when you click on an object, you can see it and that's basically the layering. So if you want to move something to the back, you click on it and move it backwards and then it goes behind the photo, or you can do the same and bring it forward. Now, again, these things used to be up here in the menu, and now you can access them from different places. So all in all, it's very similar to the old editor, but the, the tools are in different places, and some of them are hidden and you can't really see them. For example, in the old editor, you used to have here an add photo button. Now you have the add text, but you don't have the add new photo, um, but you can still add photos by dragging it onto the layout, but there's no button to add a new text box. Now let's move back to the old editor and I'm going to click on the same book template, choose this style, but I'm going to click on the full control, please make it manually. I'm going to add the same photos again. And now it's asking me if I would like the photos to be placed automatically or if I want to do them myself. Now I will want to do them myself. Now, when you come into this old editor, this is the simple version of it. And here is a little toggle, the advanced editing, which you can turn on and turn off. Now, many people were asking me what happened to the advanced editing um, toggle because they couldn't find it anymore. And that means that you were in the new editor and the new editor does not have this toggle. So that's the easiest way to distinguish between the two editors. So if you click on the full control editing option, then you will have the advanced editing. But if you click on the shortcuts, you won't have the advanced editing functions. Now this editor looks a little bit different. We've got the photos in the bottom, but everything else is going to be on the left side. You've got the layouts here, but you have a button to get more layouts and you can get them from other projects, uh, 7,000 items to choose from. So loads and loads that you can import into your project. After that, you've got backgrounds. And again, you've got the ones here and get some more from different other uh, book templates, embellishments, and you've got the idea page, which again gives you some ideas of of what kind of layouts you could choose in the photo book, but here you don't get the photos shown in it. In the top, we've got slightly more options here. We've got the project, uh, we've got save, change size. So here you have the option to change the size of the book. You can get more photos, autofill, remove unused photos, export to PDF. And here at the page, you've got add more pages, remove, import pages, advanced editing, duplicate pages, flip page, shuffle layout. You've got remove photos, add text box, add photo area, make spread and save. Now here you've got some shortcuts to some of those um, options, the add pages, add photos, add text box and add photo area, which was missing from the other editor. Undo, redo, zoom in and full screen. 
You've also got here some options, which is changing the style. If you want to change the style, you can always come back and pick a different one. Then at the storyboard, you can change the amount of photos used in the project. And if you come to the arrange, you can see all your pages and obviously you can drag them around and reorganize your pages. The final options menu here is um, again, where you can select the different kind of attributes for the photo, soft cover, hard cover. And the good thing here is that you can actually see what you're selecting. So it gives you a little preview and it tells you what the difference is between the, uh, the different options, which again has been taken away from the new editor. Let's see what happens when I start adding photos. So this is again, the simple one without advanced. I get to that in a minute. I'm going to start dragging photos. So here is one, and now you can see it created a layout. Now, if I add another one, it's going to automatically create a nice layout, not just randomly placing the photos onto the page. And if I add another one, it's going to create a layout with three photos and four and so on. So I love this feature because it allows you to create layouts as you drag the photos in. If I come to shuffle, I can change the layout with the same amount of photos and it's just like the ideas uh, tab on the right side in the new editor. I can also come to my layouts and select one from here and add it. So it works both ways. But what you'll see in this simple editor is if I click on the photo, now I have slightly more editing options. I can again crop, I have rotation, red eye remove, and some effects that I can use like black and white sepia, sunshine, vintage, and so on. But the one thing I can't do is I can't resize my photo or I can't move it around. In order to do that, you have to come to the advanced editing um, tab, toggle it, and now you can change the size of the photos, you can move them any way you want to, and here you have four extra options, which is align, match, space, and layer. So let's assume that these photos are all around the place and I want them to nicely line up. I select all three photos and I click align. I'm going to click on align top edges. And now you can see all three photos are aligned perfectly. But the space between these two is smaller than the space between these two. So again, I can select all of them and space and even out horizontally. And voila, it did that too. So these advanced editing features are really great if you want to do meticulous work or if you love having your photos organized in a nice um, geometric manner or if you have OCD or anything like that. If you have finished doing this, then you can always go back to the simple version and start dragging photos again and let the editor create more layouts for you. And this is basically the, the main difference between these three editors. So you've got a new simple editor, you've got an old simple editor, and you've got an old advanced editing feature within the simple editor. So that was the end of my video. I hope this kind of helped you clear the differences between the new, old, simple, advanced, and uh, it's a bit easier for you to decide which one to use for your next Shutterfly project. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, subscribe for more.